Hi everyone, um, my name is Sanjay Mukhopadhyay. Today it's my pleasure to introduce a guest speaker on, on uh, this YouTube video. It, it's my friend and colleague, Dr. Rajal Shah, who is the Director of Urologic Pathology at the Cleveland Clinic and a very experienced geopathologist. I'm very happy that he um, agreed to do this talk for us. Um, Dr. Shah is a, um, an author of a prostate pathology book with Dr. Ming Zhao and was prior to the uh, joining the Cleveland Clinic. He was at the University of Michigan. He has extensive experience both in academia as well as in industry and has published extensively in, in pathology, especially in geopathology with more than 130 publications. So it is an honor to have uh, Dr. Shah speak to us. Welcome, Dr. Shah. Thank you, Sanjay, for a very kind introduction. I really appreciate it. So friends and colleagues, I would like to share with you today some of my experiences from the prostate biopsy consultation practice. So in my experience in contemporary prostate biopsy practice, I think we are seeing more problem with the overgrading of prostate cancer compared to undergrading, specifically overgrading of pattern 3S4. And you may have questioned that why it is important for us to know about this thing. And I think that's a great question and important reason is shown here in this particular slide. So now we know that Patient with pure glisten pattern 3 at radical prostatectomy is an indolent disease, disease specific death and metastasis do not occur. So particularly distinction of pattern 3 from pattern 4 in, uh, in, in era of uh, active surveillance management for prostate cancer has become especially critical. So let me share with you some of the common pitfalls that I see in prostate biopsy practice that results in over interpretation of pattern 3S4. And first two top, uh, prior, uh, top pitfalls are related to poorly formed glands criteria. So number one is pathologists often over interpret few randomly arranged seemingly poorly formed glands as pattern of poorly formed gland pattern four. So this particular criteria was introduced in 2005 ISAP modified grading system and it was defined as a cluster of poorly formed glands where tangential sectioning is ruled out warrant a diagnosis of glisten pattern 4 as shown in this particular example. These glands are discrete but they are very poorly formed glands and there is a nice cluster that you can see. But I think this particular criteria, when it was introduced, it suffered from definitional ambiguity. It was not clarified that how to differentiate uh, poorly formed glands from tangential sectioning, which invariably would result during sectioning, as shown here in this particular cartoon. So we undertook an inter-observer reproducibility study amongst expert urologic pathologists in an attempt to understand how experts uh, handle this particular issue. And uh, we had about 17 urologic pathologists who participated in this study. And as you can see here, that overall reproducibility of the diagnosing of poorly formed glisten pattern 4 was only fair, but reproducibility significantly improved when we use restrictive quantitative and qualitative criteria. So what are those criteria? Let's take a look. So first, if, if you look at it, when you have five or less poorly formed glands, experts typically do not consider that as an evidence of pattern four. There was a uniform consensus against pattern four. Similarly, when you have poorly formed glands immediately adjacent to well formed glands, that was uniform consensus against pattern four. So experts considered poorly formed gland pattern four criteria only when you have six or more poorly formed glands seen in a cluster pattern as uh, seen in this particular uh, uh, illustration. So I think very important message from the study is that you should high, use high threshold. You should be conservative with this particular pattern. Whenever you are in doubt, default it to grade three. And this is especially critical when you are dealing with a small focus of prostate cancer. So here is a nice example where you can see there are several poorly formed glands. You can see all throughout the biopsy here. 
but this likely is due to tangential sectioning so it is very important that we don't over interpret this as an example of 3 4 this is graded as a 3 plus 3 equals 6. So second pitfall is also related to poorly formed gland criteria but it is more related to the definition of poorly formed glands. So again when you deal with small atrophic glands there is a tendency to over interpret that as a poorly formed glisten pattern 4. So again if we go back to this paper let's look at the consensus definition of poorly formed glands. So expert considers poorly formed glands when you have no or rare lumens when you have elongated compressed glands and elongated nest. So an example like this here where the glands are small, atrophic, but you can still appreciate well-formed lumina for most of these glands. So this is still not an example of a poorly formed glisten pattern 4. And this is a, considered to be a microacinar glisten pattern 3 example. A uh, third important pitfall is when you have a thick sectioning and or back-to-back -back arrangement of well-formed glands, it may result in a so-called pseudocrypriform architecture or fused gland pattern and may be over-interpreted as a pattern 4. So here is a nice example at low power you see back-to-back -back pattern of uh, cancer glands which creates almost like a cripriform architecture. But when we look carefully at high power examination these glands are clearly discrete you can draw a boundary around each of these glands so it is very important not to over interpret this and as an example of pattern four number four pitfall is related to mucinous fibroplasia which is also referred to as a collagenous micronodules it is one of the three specific features of prostate cancer as we know so this particular pattern results in a complex architecture which may get over interpreted as a cripriform glisten pattern 4. Here is an example where you can see these glands have intraluminal eosinophil, eosinophilic plugs but this often results in a complex architecture like this which may be over interpreted as a glomerulation or cripriform architecture pattern 4. So when you have this particular type of morphology, an important thing to do is to exclude this particular structure from your analysis. So most of the time, collagenous micronodules or mucinous fibroplasia is usually an example of pattern 3. But sometimes this pattern may result in a significantly complex architecture like an example like this. But I tend to be conservative with this type of morphology. So I clearly would not consider this as an evidence of a cribriform pattern 4, but I would consider giving a small amount of glisten pattern, minor amount of glisten pattern 4. So here, Sanjay, the point that I want to make is that cribriform glisten pattern 4 now is recognized as the most aggressive sub-pattern of uh, pattern 4. It often behaves almost like a pattern 5 in uh, several studies. It is associated with disease-specific death, metastasis, and biochemical recurrence. So emerging studies show that, that in patients with Gleason score 3 plus 4, if you have an expansile cribriform Gleason pattern 4, those patients may be omitted or excluded from active surveillance. So I think correct distinction of pseudo-cripriform patterns from true cripriform pattern is also especially critical for us. So number pattern, uh, number five pitfall is when you have well-formed glands with mucin rupture that results in a collapse of stroma, which may give you a sort of cribriform pattern uh, for like an example like seen here. These glands are have a mucin rupture with collapse of stroma. So you uh, see them crowded together. But if we look carefully, there is still some eosinophilic stroma that you can appreciate between these glands. So again, as I told you, again, don't over-interpret this type of morphologies as a cribriform glisten pattern 4. Number six, when you have well-formed glands, large glands that may result in U or Y-shaped glands, and that may get over-interpreted as a fused gland pattern 4. Here is the example. These are uh, well-formed large glands which showing branching pattern. So this is branching and not an evidence of fusion. 
So again, this would be graded as a 3 plus 3 equals 6. Pitfall number 7. So sometimes you may see telescoping of the well-formed glands, which is also referred to as a gland within gland that may result in overinterpretation as a glomeruloid pattern for particular example. Pitfall number eight, gland surrounding nerve invasion may result in complex architecture that may get overinterpreted as a pattern four. So this is infrequently seen, but gland surrounding nerve often results in a complex architecture which may easily get overinterpreted as a pattern four. So number rule of thumb in this situation is that if your overall case is pattern three, a small amount of pattern like this should not result in uh, interpretation as a pattern four. This would still be considered as a pattern three with peripheral invasion. And last but not the least pitfall is that we know now that mucin secreting prostate adenocarcinoma is not a default pattern four and its grading should be based on an underlying architecture. So most of the time uh, they represent uh, Gleason pattern 3, but there may be a component of cribriform pattern or fusion like seen in this particular example. So I would consider this uh, as a Gleason score 3 plus 4. So, so thank you very much Rajan. We, this was very, very uh, educational, uh, especially for me and I'm sure for our audience. Thank you for taking the time to make this and to simplify it so much for us. Um, this is your prostate biopsy book. Would you like to tell us something about it? Yeah, so I think Sanjay, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we have many, many such practical tips and practice points uh, loaded in this particular book. This book is very practical. It is full of tables, flow charts, and illustrations, and it is designed for problem solving and learning approach towards the prostate biopsy interpretation. So I would uh, appreciate, I think, if you check out uh, this uh, uh, biopsy book. Yes, I'd very much recommend this book to the audience. So thank you, Dr. Shah, for doing this. And thank you to the audience for listening. Thank Thanks you. very much.